since I've been having these delicious tiny tomatoes every day for lunch, I thought I would sketch them with my watercolors. And help me remember them. Not that there's any chance that I'll forget them, but you know what I mean. So I'm doing a very light sketch with a very simple pencil. I think these are sold as golf pencils, but I just like the size. Sometimes I like when people buy my handmade watercolors. I like to add them because it's adorable and you always should have a pencil with you anyways. I'm still here on the Amalfi Coast and it was a gorgeous hot morning and the weather is changing. They are forecasting rain. When I went food shopping this morning, and by the way, I'm starting with a transparent yellow just as a base here. When I went food shopping this morning, I learned a local expression because I said, Do you think it will rain? No, I said, I think it will rain, and the shopkeeper said uh, he was too polite to actually directly use that phrase with me, but he taught me that when people say here that they think it will rain, and by the way, I'm moving on with the darker gamboge, the response, a local response in Neapolitan dialect, or language rather, is do you have a hernia? And apparently the belief is, I don't know if this is scientifically accurate, that when you have a hernia, you're more sensitive to change in weather. I'm now using, I'm going to mix a little bit of my sap green with some raw sienna. So it was pretty funny because the guy taught me this. He said, well, if somebody says they think it will rain, ask them. Your the response is, tienu babash. I think that's correct, which means, do you have hernia? So it was funny because then later when I was paying, an elderly woman came in and I don't know if he did it on purpose. No, he didn't, because it was somebody else in the store asked her, or said, rather, I think it will rain later. And her response, as if on cue, was, Tieno babash, like, do you have a hernia? So that's what I learned today. Italians are very particular about bodily things, like the beliefs. It's probably true in every traditional culture, and it's all getting lost as the world becomes more globalized and more similar. Oh, the sun's coming out. It sounds like somebody's playing guitar and singing in one of the nearby apartments. I'm gonna let this dry and then go over it again with some real red. The sun is out and I am proceeding left to right since I'm right-handed with this first tomato and I'm using one of my very favorite colors that work really well for tomatoes, I think. It's a perylene 
Scarlet by Daniel Smith. And with watercolor, you get, I think, it took me a while to learn this and I forget it regularly. You get best color effects with multiple layers rather than by going thick. And certainly these tomatoes are a nice deep color. There is an unspoken rule in Italy that, especially southern Italy and beach areas, you don't make noise between the hours of two and four at least, because a lot of people like to nap. So this young man, actually this top tomato is lighter, I'll honor that. I mean of course you can make your tomatoes whatever color you like, but I like the variety. So instead of the perylene scarlet here, I'm using the Schmincke's translucent yellow, it's translucent orange, sorry. I was saying, so this young man who's playing and singing the guitar, I don't know exactly what, I mean playing the guitar and singing, I don't know exactly what time it is, but certainly not after four. On the other hand, other people that often break the rule, this rule, are construction workers. There always seems to be a lot of construction in Italy in the summer. And here things are built out of, not out of wood, but rather out of stone and cement. And, and so construction is not just hammering, but usually involves a whole lot of jackhammers. So I'm adding a tiny bit of um, um, ultramarine blue to my mixture of sap green and um, raw sienna. even be a famous singer. I'm not good enough at music to recognize what's good and what's bad. Unless it's really bad. Or really good. This seems to be neither. But maybe it's a famous singer that's appearing in the background of my painting video. I'm going to let this dry again for one last pass. Since the sun has come up, it would be a shame. These things have moved since I started painting them, it seems, but who knows. It would be a shame not to include these gorgeous shadows. So I'm going to play it safe here and draw them.
They're really amazing. It's almost as if they belong to other objects than these humble tomatoes because uh, it's not, they're kind of appearing from a different place than where I'm looking. I, I don't know how to explain it, but they look like they belong to something else. Maybe it's just the sun that's gone to my head and it's my head that belongs somewhere else, but that's my impression. So, now that I've sketched them, I'll go to my trusty shadow violet and boldly assert them. Somehow, see for example, even though the tomato has a very distinct tip, nipple, the shadow doesn't. Tomatoes are very similar to these. The, the seller told me these are from Sicily, so they are not what locals call pinoli. Pinoli are a type of Neapolitan tomatoes that I'm told are very similar looking to these. They also have that nipple-like thing. Um, but the reason why they're called pinoli is because it's from appendere, or to hang. At least this is what I learned today. And they ripen in September. And people in this area of Naples and Campania hang them when they ripen in September. And this makes them available until... Christmas, he said. Look at this, this is drying so fast. I don't even have time to grab more because it's so warm. So can you imagine you pick your tomatoes in, in September and then if you play your cards right and you hang it in the right way, I imagine there are rules to that, you can still eat them. In for Christmas in December, which I'm assuming they dry out, but they must dry out in such a way that they're not simply sun-dried tomatoes. So I'm done with the green, and now I'm going to do one last pass of the red with that scarlet. This is not a completely loose painting, I would say, but um, it's kind of a sketch like painting. I happen to have some very dark red here, and I'm going to use that too. It's a, a quinacridone burnt scarlet by Daniel Smith. I've heard people, um, I've read, like in watercolor groups on Facebook, people in the West who live in almost um, deserty conditions complain that their watercolors dry so fast. And I remember saying, well, isn't that great? I mean, those of us who work in washes really want our watercolors to dry and patiently wait for each uh, layer to dry before we go on to the next. So to me that sounded like a very nice problem to have. 
but you know, other people problems, we don't really feel them, I think, until we experience them. And I know what they mean now, like, because of the sun is so hot, this is drying so fast that I barely have time to do anything with it. So, but I'm gonna stop here. These are my three little tomatoes. I will probably proceed to eat as soon as I shut the camera. They really are delicious. Thank you for watching. You're welcome to leave um, questions in the comments. And before I leave you, a little treat of the Amalfi Coast.